Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the greatest time of the day. From the center of the universe, New York City, it's the main event you've been waiting for. It's time to go in the cage with Cyclone! Guess who it is? It's me, your God, your one and only. Here's the deal. Luke Thomas, Errol Hawani, Chael Sonnen, none of them are working today. The guys at MMA Fighting, not working today. You know who's giving you your inf MMA news? You know who's giving you all your news today? This guy, Cyclone. That's right. So, I want to welcome you to episode 20 of In the Cage with Cyclone in my new home, Paradise Studios in beautiful Massapequa, Long Island. You know, so many ups and downs have happened, as you guys have known throughout the beginning of the show to where it has been, and I think this is the spot for me. Hope you guys like the show. Hope you guys share the show. Hope you guys donate to the show. Um, so that's what's been going on. Uh, a lot of craziness. It is Labor Day, September 4th, September 3rd. It, it seems like the first. Um, it is humid still. You know, I, I'm a big guy. I, I need the cold weather. I'm waiting for the cold weather to come in. Maybe within a week or two, the cold weather will be back. Uh, I don't want ice storms, but I could go with the 40s, you know. Big guys don't, we don't do good in the heat. Uh, so like I said, that's been what's been going on. I uh, want to remind everybody, CycloneComedy.com is the Facebook page. And the number, because now we can take callers here. It's 516-945-9099. Call will put you through. And guess what? I don't have one guest on this brand spanking new show. I got two, 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 two guests coming to stop by. Um, as we expand, we're doing more Total Combat Sports. It's now no longer just MMA. Don't worry, I'm not taking, you know, all you MMA fans, it, nothing's getting taken away from you, but we're just expanding it a little bit to boxing, to wrestling, you know, maybe even a glory kickboxing, you know, just expanding our horizons. We're growing up from toddlers, we're now teenagers. Uh, but later in the show, like I said, we got two guests coming in. We're going to be talking MMA drama because... It's a day of the week that ends in Y, so obviously there's drama going on in MMA. And we're going to be talking about the PFL finishing their season once we come back from this quick break. This is Frank Edgar. This is the Barbarian, Tim Boach. I'm World Series of Fighting undefeated lightweight champion, Justin Gaethje. Yeah. MMA legend, UFC Hall of Famer, Ice Man. Check it out. If you got the guts, step in the cage with Cyclone. Alrighty. We are back. Hope you liked that little graphic that I came up with. Gotta thank Canva.com. Gotta thank my friend Kevin for putting me onto Canva. So my non-technological buttocks can start doing some stuff on my own. So, thank you, Kevin. Uh, so the PFL just ended their regular season, and I tell you what, going into the season, I did not think their format was gonna do good. 
I harped, I harped, I harped that it was going to actually fail. Look at this. Write this day on the calendar because it's the first time in my life I'm wrong. The season actually went really, really good. And I think the highlight, or I don't know if you want to say highlight, but the, the big news came when, now the first three fights on the night were what they called a fighter showcase, where they brought in six new fighters that weren't there during the season that they might offer contracts to. Well, Mohamed Darius hasn't fought in 31 months. No ring rust. I don't know what he's been doing in these past 31 months. I know he hasn't been eating a lot like I have. But I will say this. Devastating. Going backwards. And I don't know how many of you guys train. But when you go backwards, you don't have leverage. You normally don't have balance as you're backpedaling. He measures his opponent, uh, Leroy Johnson, and a knee right up the gut, right on the jaw, knocks out Leroy face first. <sighs> three minutes out cold. He's carried out on a stretcher. They rush him to Atlantic City General Hospital or some hospital like that. Um, and actually, they haven't updated any news about him, which, I mean, it could be good, could be bad. I mean, you know he's not dead because, I mean, they would have said if he would have died, but no news on him, but he was out like a light. My goodness. Uh, Khabib's cousin, and, and I don't know what it is about Dagestani's, and or people na named, you know, uh, Nurmagomedov. The fact of the matter is, they're all freaking undefeated. They are. Uh, his cousin Umar went to seven and zero. He's twenty two years old, and he looks like a young Habib. You can tell the family resemblance. But where Habib takes guys down and he marks them, this kid's all about the stand-up. And uh, like you said, now 7-0. So I think his cousin might talk to Dana and say, you know, bring my cousin over. Um, that is providing that the PFL doesn't give him a contract next year. And the other big story is Emiliano Sordi needed a win to get into the playoffs. And that's what I like about the PFL format. Win, when it comes down to it, win, you're in, lose, you go home. Uh, Jason Butcher comes charging forward like a freaking bull. Emiliano sidesteps him, uppercuts him, and just lays off a vicious combo and puts him out in 16 seconds. That is what you call what the PFL is all about. Fast finishes. Not going three rounds. Not going to judges' scorecards. And I get it. Every fighter, all you guys that train, you want to put your opponent out. Sometimes it's easier said than done. That's what's key in the PFL. You get the job done like that. And you get the points to help move you forward. Um, Cage Warriors 96 was this past weekend as well. And Patty Pimblett tried, tried really, really hard to become the second person to become a two-division champion. And we all know the first, Kuna McGregor. You know, dude, you, you guys that know me, knew the show could not go on without me somehow, some way, mentioning Conor McGregor. And the fact of the matter is, there, I just mentioned him. Uh, unfortunately, 
in the lightweight fight. He got, he started out really good, but Soren back, came back and took it to him and actually won a, a unanimous decision. So Patty gets to start the drawing board all over again after a loss. Uh, he turned the UFC down. There was some things going back and forth. Were they ever going to offer him a contract or not? And now nah, I don't think Dana and the powers that be are going to be offering him a contract anytime soon. And two quick notes about Invicta 31. Number one, and, and I just wrote an article about it, Vernon Janaroba retaining her strawway title. This chick, look, there are 30 w girls in Invicta's strawway division. She has plenty to go through there. But if the UFC would sign her, Oh, my freaking God. Oh, God. She she has the perfect mixture of the stand-up, the power, and the speed of the top strawweights in the UFC. If she went there, she could cause a lot of problems for a lot of the girls there. Um... So just check out the article. And my hat has to go off to Miss Per Gonzalez, formerly of the UFC, now 3-0 and in Invicta. Uh, unanimous decision over uh, Diane Firmino. Once again, proving she'll be back soon enough in the UFC. And I think I want to take another quick break before our first guest should be calling in. Hi, I'm Jim Miller. This is Dan Mergliata. I'm Derek Brunson. I'm Nick the Carney Lentz, and you're locked into the cage with Cyclone. So, as we wait, you know, you deal with fighters. You gotta admit, you gotta know, they're always so busy. So, um, as we wait, uh, let me go back a little bit to uh, that Invicta card. Th the first fight was supposed to be on Facebook Live. There was an emergency situation where one of the girls had to be taken off the card and she got scratched off. So they scrambled, as I am now doing. And uh, a second fight moved up to the Facebook card. And it was uh, Aubrey Wolf and Holly Salazar. And they're going back and forth, back and forth. And in the heat of the battle, and, and you got to kind of forgive a fighter for a mental lapse. It's happened a billion times over. But Aubrey is uh, on full mount on uh, Holly. And she's ground, ground and pounding her. All of a sudden, she slams him with a headbutt. So ref stands him up, takes a point away. And a fight that actually Aubrey would have won, that one point matters winds up being a majority draw. Go figure. Boy. Um, while we are waiting, you know what we're going to do? We are going to pull a fast one. As I remind everyone to call 516-945-9099. One of my favorite segments that I had going way back was the Builder Fighter, taking the best parts of every fighter and mixing them together as a Frankenstein's monster. And it's actually a shame we can't do something like visually, because especially now, it's come out that the UFC is going after people 
for copyright, for images, and I don't need no problems. I got enough problems as it is. But um, the vision I did was with Gegard Musasi. I took Andre Harrison's ears. I took Emily Ducote's nose. Had to go with Smile and Sam Alvey's smile. Took the stare down of Joanna John Jacek. And now the chirping. The best chirper in the game right now is a name you guys knew I would mention before, and you know I'm going to mention him now. Kuna McGregor. So as we continue to build a fighter, that's the next step. Slowly and surely, we will have a complete fighter. And at the end of this mass chaos, what I'm going to do is try to put something together. And you know what else I'm going to do now while I wait? This is called being prepared. Um, as I just sent that message. Um, and, you know, later on also, I just want to say we're going to be talking about a lot of top stories. I'll have a second guest if I could ever get my first guest. Maybe, I don't know, should flip-flop them. But in the meantime, another one of my favorite segments, and I know it was yours as well, the dream fight. And I just happened to have brought the bag of numbers just in case something like this happened. See? Always got to be prepared, even though I was never a Boy Scout. So, going into the grab bag of 800 numbers. Do, 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 do. And we're going to pull out two numbers. Number uh, 49 and 24. I said 49, didn't I? Yes. Wow. All right, boys and girls. I got quite a fight for you. Young Kira Gracie. The one female Gracie. The youngest female Gracie. Kira is taking on Anderson Spider Silva. Which, God, I mean, what's in a name is a Gracie, but geez Louise. Does she re would she really stand a chance against Spider? I don't know. I think Spider would mark her. Although then again, you know, if for some reason he didn't go all crazy like he did with Chris Weidman and start acting stupid... I think he would beat her up pretty bad. As I take a little sip of my juicy. So yeah, I think Spider would take Kira out. Hmm. Okay, so what I would like to do is remind Everyone, to keep it right here on Strong Island Radio and Television, Facebook, and check out all the shows. I'm kicking it all off this week because I'm just so special. And hopefully, you guys will start calling in, like I said, the numbers right down here, 516 Nine four five ninety ninety nine. Give me a call. You can call me about anything. You can call me about anything in wrestling, in boxing, in MMA. And remember, one of you, one of you, 
is going to win a prize. Free prize. Like I've always done because I love you guys. I love the support you guys give me. So that's what I do. I give away free stuff. Uh, I guess we could go with the top stories while I'm waiting. There was one story actually that was breaking earlier today that Ryan Benoit is out of UFC 228 this coming Saturday night against Roberto Sanchez. <coughs> and very quickly, surprisingly, the UFC found themselves a replacement. The monkey god himself, Jared Brooks, is now fighting Roberto Sanchez. Jared Brooks of the should have been a guest but forgot to call in to show number two, Jared Brooks. <coughs> that Jared Brooks. 228 actually suffered his first career loss his last time out um, but yeah he's getting back on the horse and maybe he will get himself back in the win column and uh, <coughs> I believe we should have finally our first guest from the world of wrestling. Independent wrestler Mr. No Limits himself, Chris Banks. Always remember the name, Chris Banks. Who should be dialing in And I believe he's there. Chris Banks? Nope, Jackson Vile. Oh. See, this is what happens when we deal with, with you wrestlers, you, you, you freaks of nature. Mr. Vile, how are you doing? I'm fine, how are you? All right, so this past Saturday night, Southern Legacy Wrestling, Mr. Jackson Vile, Mr. Anti-Trend, you and Stephen Michaels went at it. We did. Are you still banged up? You better believe it. I know he is, too. Do you think he got the worst end of the deal? I don't know. At the end of the day, he, he retained the title. Uh, but I know I injured him. I know his leg is, is weakened. I know he's wearing a knee brace after me. So depends on how you want to look at it. Um, so let me move forward. This coming Saturday, it's a busy Saturday in combat sports. You know, a bunch of independent cards. You got UFC 228. You got... Uh, Danny Jacobs and Sean Porter in the Barclay Center. But you, you're hopping back in the squared circle, going after your, trying to get your belt back from David Ali. Think you're going to get it? That's Wednesday. That's actually Wednesday, not Saturday. Saturday, I'm back to Southern Legacy. Uh, I'm going to be taking on Ryan Rembrandt. Wednesday, I'm coming back for my Gladiator Championship in Valdosta, Georgia. At Spinebuster Championship Wrestling. 
See, this is what happens. First show back, I got my notes all mixed up. I should have been better at that. It's fine. It's hard you, for me to keep track, too. You you forgive me, Mr. Vile, sir? Absolutely. Now, look, you you come from the world of entertainment bef before you got into wrestling. Correct. Do you see any similarities in the two di in the two businesses? Well, I, I, I did quite a few things. I did music. I did stand-up. I also did mixed martial arts. Oh, uh, there's some similarities. There's some differences. Um, mixed martial arts was was good, um, but it doesn't have the same challenges as pro wrestling. Um, you never have to worry about th someone throwing a steel chair at your head when you're inside an octagon. Um, Stand-up was all right, uh, you know, and mu music was, was pretty okay. Um, but you're not on your own. You know, I, I like being on my own. So there's some similarities. I mean, there's a crowd. Wherever there's a crowd, there's things you need to do to make sure the crowd knows what's going on. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a reason football players dance when they, they score a touchdown. You know, uh, you need to the, – the, the audience and the crowd needs more than just the sport itself these days. Now, you know, that's actually a good idea. Every time you drop an opponent, just start dancing. I mean, I have a pretty mean worm. <laughs> you never, see, you know what? You never did that as a stand-up. I could have imagined you back at the Evanflow days, kill, you know, having a great punchline. The jo the, the, you get an applause break and you just drop down and start doing the worm. Uh, that would work if I ever had a great punchline. <laughs> Oh, uh, you weren't, you know what, you weren't that bad. There were some fun times there. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Curtis H Harper is a boxer. And yeah. th the video w has gone viral beyond belief. He was taking on uh, Effie Ajagba. Comes into the ring. Gets, you know, announced. The ref, you know, does it in the middle of the ring, you know, protect yourselves at all time, touch gloves, step back. Timekeeper at the bell rings the bell, and Curtis turns around and walks out the ring and just walks to the back. And he, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. Now, outside of maybe like a heel turning around and coming back and, you know, beating the snot out of a baby face what do you think would happen in the world of wrestling if you or anybody else on the indie circuit turn around walked out and just disappeared there's uh there'd be a spot for jackson vile on that show in the future um you know there there there's People like to use the term heels and faces, and then, and in the end of the day, it's, it's sometimes there's people that the crowd likes and there's people the crowd doesn't like, regardless of what you do. Um, tucking tail and and walking out of a fight like a uh, you told me I can't use language like a kitty cat <laughs> is, is not something that that I or or I think any other pro wrestler really really would stand for. I mean, look, sometimes. You got to do what you got to do to to win a fight or to protect yourself or to create space or anything. But to just not fight when you're being paid to fight, that that just makes you a wuss, man. And and I'm no wuss. You know what? I can call you a lot of things, and I gotta admit, wuss would not be it. I gotta admit. Appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, no. right now I'm in a little bit of hot water with the. Uh, Southern Legacy Wrestling staff, some of the, the fans aren't so happy about the, the spitting that comes from Jackson Vile's mouth. But I've never spit on any of them, so I don't know what they're complaining about. <laughs> you know, just say, you know, you, you have phlegm, you know, you dry mouth, and you can't help it. No, get this. They think I'm a bad influence on their children because it's a, it's a bad habit. You no, these know. fans are, 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 are pretty dumb. They, they they think we're all supposed to be role models and, and, and 
and you know on the Wheaties box for their 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 little toddlets. But I'm I'm the antithesis of that. I, I'm not gonna do what what people want me to do. I'm not gonna water myself down for some children. You know, you don't want them to spit. Be a better parent. Don't rely on <laughs> on me to change my ways. Now, speaking of faces, I, I have to ask you something else that just went down. Jay Lethal, okay? Yeah. I don't know if you saw this last fight at uh, All In. I, I was I was wrestling. I was while All In was going on. I was in the main event at Southern Legacy, all um, you know, fighting for for the heavyweight championship. So unfortunately, I didn't get a ca- ca- chance to catch it yet. See, th- that's the difference between you and me. You being the athletic type, you know, you're in there, you know, busting your butt working. And me, I'm sitting back in my living room writing articles, sweating like a pig in poop. I mean, I'll watch it. The time will come when I watch it, but I have, I have a very, very busy schedule. You know, I, I train at WWA4 in Atlanta with Dante Fox or AR Fox, however you know him as. Um, I just came from there. Um, I left early for, for this interview. So uh, normally I'd be there for another hour at least. Um, you know, between that, between going to the gym, between traveling for these shows, um, you know, I get, I watch wrestling. I, I, I don't necessarily keep up with any product. Um, I couldn't tell you many of the storylines that are going on or anything along those lines, but I study as much as I can, um, but to, to get a chance to sit back and enjoy wrestling and just enjoy watching it is uh, not as frequent as it used to be. Well, I don't want to give you any spoilers. I don't want to ruin it, but I have to. I already know what happens. It's fine. Okay. So I, wa- I want to get your opinion on this. Lanny Poffo, you know, Randy Savage's brother in real oh. life, sort of signed off on allowing Jay Lethal to use Savage's intro music, which is, you know, the pop of circumstance is a graduation music, you know, so it's not no. really Savage's, but he also allowed him to use his colors. Right. What's your opinion? Do, do, are you, are you kind of cool with the idea of Lanny letting someone else use Randy's colors and and do Look, the, the savage gimmick? Jay Lethal, Jay Lethal started his career kind of as an imitator. And this isn't anything against Jay Lethal. He's, he's a brilliant, brilliant wrestler. He's, he's an incredible in-ring performer. But you think about it, when he first started, or, or when he really started getting buzzed, he was the black machismo. His whole gimmick was, was, I don't want to say ripping off because that, that makes it sound dirty, but his whole gimmick was playing off Macho Man Randy Savage. Now that he's found his own, his own flavor, his own style, his own, he's found Jay Lethal without the black machismo and on a stage that grand for him to go back to his roots, I say, hell yeah. I mean, how many people rip off or, or reuse or imitate the Ric Flair gimmick? I mean, I'm not going to name names, but that since Ric Flair's been around, there's been an endless amount of imitators doing the strut doing the, the feather coat, doing the woo, you doing the rhyming, doing all of that stuff, and, and it is what it is. There's some that are good, and they do it on their own, and then there's others like uh, uh, Paul Lee who are just trash and they need it to get by, you know? I mean, I was going to say, I, as I walk down the street, I actually woo with people. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> well, look, Jackson... Mr. Vile, sir, I want to thank you for being the very first guest on the Brand Spanking New Show. All righty. You helped expand from just MMA to all combat sports, and I want to thank you, sir. Oh, thank you for having me. And I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Jackson Vile, signing off. Later. So, how cool was that? From Hotlanta to
to Hot Island, Strong Island, Hot Island, because it's everywhere is hot right now. I know, I know, all you liberals, it's because it's global warming. Well, in three weeks, I'm going to be saying, ain't no more global warming. So, uh, let's just get this going as I believe our next guest should be any second. Um, so yeah, while we wait, how amazingly cool was that? Jackson Vile. He's actually, outside of that loss, on a pretty good win streak he had himself going on. And while we wait, let's talk some drama. Because there's always drama in the world of MMA. The big story is this Donald Cerrone, Mike Winklejohn, Mike Perry sort of like love story triangle going on. And the fact of the matter is it's starting to sound like TJ and Cody with the alpha males. The gym was... Greg Jackson's. Michael Winklejohn comes in with much needed money and he starts taking things over. And once he started taking things over, things started going bad. I mean, not terribly bad, but things went from great to not so great for Jackson Wing. And Cowboy saw everybody else leave. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to go open up my own place closer to home. And the fact of the matter is, he has every right to do it. Fighters bounce around all the time. But it really sounds like another scorned burn lover triangle sort of deal and I gotta admit most of the fighters like Misha Tate included have all come out saying they've done cowboy wrong it, it, even though Mike Perry's n new to the gym it should be you know cowboys call whether he wants to train there for their fight they just X'd him out you gotta admit that's kind of kind of wrong uh Another piece of drama, and I didn't think I was going to bring this up, but I'll be bringing it up now. Um, Logan Paul. Who in the world would have thought Logan Paul would be a topic to discuss? Look, Logan Paul is a YouTube sensation. We're all trying to be that. Me, the guy here, the guy there, the guy there, the guy there. We're all trying to be bigger than what we are. Logan Paul hit that level. I don't know if the fight he had with KSI was real, but it's against two YouTubers, two, two athletic types. This ain't exactly athletic. Although there's a couple of people I do want to fight. And I got my eyes on you guys. But anyways, the fact of the matter is, for him to now be chirping to UFC fighters is one thing. But for UFC fighters to be now chirping to him, that's just nuts. And to even think... That he's going to get a fight. That, that the powers that be are going to give this kid at least a one-fight contract. 
I don't care how athletic you are. You're an untrained fighter. You're a YouTube sensation, and that means one thing. That means eyes are on you. Hell, I could be the first one to admit it. I wish I had those eyes on me. Especially right now. But the fact of the matter remains. That's all he is. And, and at least when they offered the contract to CM Punk, he was in pro wrestling. He, he was a, you know, a fighter's fighter. He, he, he had something to offer. The only thing that Logan Paul can offer WME and IMG is a couple of viewers. Mind you, once again, I wish I had that many viewers. And maybe if you out there right now can share this, spread this to your friends, your families, your next door neighbors, the people you hate, the people you like. Maybe one day I will. But anyways, that's all he can offer them. And I really can't see them saying, okay, we'll give you a one-fight deal. Really can't. It, it would... It, the, 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 the hardcore fans would, like, punch themselves in their face. There would be such an outcry against it. Um, I don't see it happening. Now, we can right now also preview what's coming up. And this Friday is LFA 48. And someone that should be getting possibly a UFC contract is on that core card. Cord, card, card, cord. Uh, featherweight uh, Derek Miner. He's only 28 years old. And yeah, you know what? That's not that 22 to 25 range that the UFC guys like. He's 28. But what he is, is 21 and 8. It's a decent record, but his 18 submission wins out of those 21. And 17 of them, first round. That means this kid, Derek Miner, finishes people. He's a highlight. And let's face it, the UFC featherweight division... They're top-heavy. They could use some new fish in the shark tank to uh, provide some prey for the top guns. If he wins and goes to 22 and 9, take out your calendar, take out your pen, and write it down that on this day, on Labor Day 2018, Cyclone said, Derek Miner... Going to get himself a UFC contract. Mark my words. Now, on Saturday, it's so freaking busy. You have one championship from Japan. You have, at the Barclays Center, three blocks from my other TV studio. Danny Garcia, Sean Porter. The WBC Welterweight Championship is on the line. And speaking of welterweights, it's also Saturday night. The welterweight champion, Tyron Woodley, Darren Gorilla Till. This fight, listen, I'm still going to have a UFC 228 prediction raffle later in the week. I can't predict a winner on this. I am going back and forth on this one fight. The fact of the matter is, it's too close to call. Till is like his nickname, a gorilla. And he has so much size on Tyron. But Tyron, I mean, 
I don't like him, but the fact of the matter is he's he's champ for a reason. And I think he's going to give Darren all he can handle. I'm right now leaning a little bit towards Darren, though. But I wouldn't be surprised either way. Uh, Nico against Valentina. You have Zabit fighting against stepping in Brandon Davis. And you got to give this kid credit. Two weeks notice going in against a, a terror like Zabit. Uh, Tatiana Suarez is stepping up. Look, there's plateaus to every fighter's career. A lot of like this, like this, like this. And then they make one giant step up. And that's what she's doing against Carla Sparza. Um, and that's 228. I want to remind everybody that uh, you guys can contact me on Facebook at C-Y-C-I-E-P-R-O-D-Z, Psyche Prods. Um, there's CycloneComedy.com. And the number to call in, 516-945-9099. Which, um, I guess we could, while we're waiting, um, Let me just do this because I think I think I know what our let me this is so unprofessional and I tari for unprofessionalism. Haha <laughs> Yep, oops. Um so what we can do now is one of my other segments. I don't like doing a top 15. Let's do. Hey, look at this. Mr. No Limits, is this you? Hey. Hello? Hello, caller. Yes. Trying to call into Jay. This is Cyclone. <laughs> Tell her to stop listening to her phone or her phone. Um, don't listen to yourself. I need you to. Okay, I'm turning it off. <laughs> God. No, it's Susan Walker. Goodness gracious, Susan, hello. Hey! <laughs> Guess what? You as the caller, I'm sending you a prize. Hey. F everyone else. You get it. You you have been with me from day one. <laughs> You're getting another prize. Thank you. So what is oh, your question? To win. <laughs> so what is your question? Oh gosh, so many. Um, I should have written them Pick down. Pick one. <laughs> So you really think the Till Woodley would be that close? Oh my God, yeah. I mean, here's the deal: the the a fighter's strength comes from his legs. Tyron's legs are huge. Mm -hmm. He's going to get under if he can get inside. Uh, Gorilla's reach. He's going to be able to pop him in the chin. He's going to take him down. And once he takes him down, that size advantage disappears. And he's going to ground him. He's going to pound him. And then we see what Darren Till is made out of. Now, on the reverse, if, if Darren can, you know, kick him, if he can jab him and connect with his power, then Woodley's going to sleep. Really? You think so? Yeah. 
But I like, but like I said, I'm on, I'm on the right now. I'm on the fence. Are you there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I want to thank you for calling. Oh, well, you're very welcome. And I shall be sending your prize out for you All tomorrow. Right, <laughs> and by the way, I want to say I am happy you are feeling better. Oh, thank you very much. Not a problem. All right. Well, I'm glad you got your first show, and it's going good. Eh, you know, not good. You know, hey, some bu some bumps in the huh. road. But you know what? I I just have to figure out how I want to do this. Do I want to do callers possibly throughout the show? Do I want to save only callers for the end of the show? Keep them at the beginning of the show? I don't know. I'm, I got to toss things around. I'm still tinkering you'll, with things. You'll figure it out, you know. It's the first show of this, you know. Can knock on wood. This one. Can knock on wood. Can knock yeah. on wood. So I we'll, know you can do it, so it'll be all good. <laughs> cool beans, and we will talk to you <laughs> soon. All right, sounds good. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Ah, bye. All righty. So, to all you other callers that were going to call or not going to call, you missed out. Susan Walker won the prize. You didn't. Shame, shame. But next Monday, you call in and you can win the prize. Okay? Capiche? Comprende? Um, I'm not really sure how to say it in other words. Except for those. Um, so, I don't know if we're going to sadly run out of time, but I do want to say that on this day in MMA history, I couldn't find anything. I looked, I looked, and I looked, and I couldn't find anything. No news in MMA history on this date. But a couple birthdays today. So I want to say happy boy day to Julia Jones from Invicta turns 30. Tyron Sponge, who last time I saw him was, I was with my friend Brian Horan in the city. He turns 32. Shamil Magomedov turns 32. Lorenz Larkin is 31 today. And I'm saving the best for last. The third reason why I am an MMA fan. The Dominator, Dominic Cruz, turns 32 today. Today, all their birthdays. September 3rd. Happy boy day. So, I want to say it's been a fast, interesting show today. Some kinks I got to work out, as opposed to kinks the band. But I do want to say, next Monday, catch me, 7 to 7.55, as I will be here. Strong Island Radio and TV. Strong on Radio and Television on Facebook. The TuneIn app, Strong Island Radio. Please catch, watch, listen. And until next Monday, ladies and gentlemen, I am Cyclone saying, just because you're not an athlete doesn't mean you cannot be an athletic supporter. Bye-bye.